the next-gen console prices are out in the open, and it's safe to say that things are looking good. No company has gone past the $500 threshold, which is amazing considering the kind of hardware these new consoles are packing. However, this console gen release is a bit different from all of the previous ones in that both companies are offering two versions of their new consoles straight from the start. The standard $500 version and a more budget-friendly option. Sony is offering the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition, while Microsoft is giving us the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S. In this video, we'll be zooming in on all of the differences between the Xbox Series X and the Xbox Series S to help you choose the console best suited to your needs in case you've already decided to follow the Xbox route. We'll also explain what the difference is between the two PlayStation consoles, but that can be summed up in a single sentence, so we won't belabor the point any further. Finally, we'll take a look at how the budget-friendly consoles measure up against each other. So without any further ado, Let's begin. First things first, let's take a look at exactly what the Xbox Series S is. The Series S is a budget-friendly variant of the new Series X console. It's a lot slimmer than the monolithic Series X and comes with a two-tone black and white finish that's a bit unusual for an Xbox console. The Series S and Series X will launch on November 10th at $300 and $500 respectively. So right off the bat, purchasing the console that's going to be compatible with the next-gen games for 60% off the price is a really good deal. And the folks at Microsoft are adamant about this point. The Series S will be able to run all of the games that get released on the Series X. But obviously, there will be some trade-offs. So let's go over the difference between the two versions of Microsoft's new console, starting with the hardware. Based on just the spec sheet, things aren't looking too good for the Series S. It features the same 8-core custom Zen 2 CPU as the Series X, only it runs at a lower clock speed. So far, so good. But when we get to the GPU, things start to get a little bit shakier. Both the Series X and the Series S utilize a custom RDNA 2 GPU. However, the GPU that comes with the Series S is significantly less powerful than the one found in the Series X. Not only does it run at lower clock speed, but it also features a mere 20 compute units, which seems like a paltry amount compared to the Series X's 52 compute units. To put this into perspective, Series S scores only 4 teraflops, while Series X boasts a whopping 12.15 teraflops. So if we were to look just at the teraflops, we can conclude that the GPU found in the Series S console has only a third of the power that the Series X packs. And we can see a similar trend with regards to RAM and storage. Both console versions will utilize the same GDDR6 RAM, but in terms of volume, the Series S will only come with 10GB of RAM compared to the 16GB found in the Series X console. And as far as storage, both versions will get custom NVMe SSDs, but the Series S console will only come with a 512GB SSD, whereas the Series X SSD will come with a full terabyte of storage space. Finally, the Series S will be a digital-only console, meaning that it won't come with a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive. Honestly, there's no getting around this. A good 4K UHD Blu-ray drive can cost well over $200, so it was inevitable that the lower-priced version of the console would lack this feature. But on-paper specs aren't the best indicator of performance, so let's take a look at what kind of performance you can expect from these consoles. As consumers, we are nothing but thrilled that Sony and Microsoft will be offering these more budget-oriented versions of the new consoles. However, Microsoft's approach to this left us feeling anxious at first. If the Series S is going to be compatible with all next-gen games, does this mean that developers will have to work with its more limited hardware as a baseline? This would no doubt stifle the developers working on titles for multiple platforms as they wouldn't be able to push the next-gen hardware found in the $500 versions of the consoles to its fullest potential. Thankfully, this doesn't seem to be the case, and the reasoning is fairly straightforward. The Series X will not attempt to tackle the 4K resolutions. Instead, it'll look to render games in 1440p, also known as 2K. 
According to the folks at Xbox, this change alone will be enough to account for the weaker hardware. So you will be able to play the exact same games on both the Series X and the Series S, but the games will be rendered in a different resolution. In this regard, the situation isn't too different from the one we've got going with the Xbox One and the Xbox One X. Same games, but different resolutions. What's more, the Series S will also support frame rates of up to 120 FPS. Whether or not we'll see this in action is another thing entirely, but the potential is there. And last but not least, if you hook up the Series S console to a 4K TV, you will have the option to upscale the resolution to 4K. This won't look as good as the native 4K that the Series X delivers, but it's a nice perk nonetheless. Ultimately, the actual in-game performance will vary from game to game based on how demanding and how optimized it is. If all next-gen titles end up running great on the Series S without forcing any restrictions onto the developers because of the less powerful hardware, then this version of the console will offer great value. It won't be the version for everybody, but it will be a great pick for the right people. So let's consider whom the Series S is for exactly. Obviously, the Series S is the more affordable version of the new console that anyone who can't afford the Series X will get. But there are also several reasons why you might want to pick the Series S instead of the Series X, even if you have the money for it. The first reason would be if you don't want a 4K TV and you don't plan on getting one in the near future. Based on what we've heard from Microsoft, the two versions of this console will only differ in the resolution that the games are rendered in, at least on the user end of things. So if you already don't own a 4K TV, the Series X will not offer more tangible value than the Series S. This is, of course, based on the assumption that the decreased RAM volume and less powerful GPU won't cause any other issues. It also holds true if you don't mind the lack of a physical disk drive. But if all of these conditions are met, the Series S will be the superior product as far as value is concerned. The only limitations you'll still feel will be the cramped storage space. With as huge as next-gen AAA titles are going to get, we could see that the 512GB of storage on the Series S getting filled up rather quickly. You will have the option of expanding the storage, but NVMe SSDs aren't exactly what we'd call affordable. With the console and the extra storage accounted for, you may get closer to the price point of the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition. So let's take a look at how the Series S handles this competition, shall we? As we mentioned in the introduction, the difference between the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 5 Digital can be summed up in a single sentence. The Digital Edition doesn't come with a disk drive. That's it, everything else is the same. The $400 Digital Edition still has the exact same hardware that the $500 PS5 has. The CPU, GPU, RAM, and storage solutions are all identical. So the PS5 Digital Edition will run all games just as well as the $500 version of the console. Now we won't get into the comparisons between PS5 and the Xbox Series X here. We've already made that video. It's quite comprehensive and we suggest you go check it if you still don't know how these consoles stack up. In this sense, comparing the Xbox Series S to the PS5 Digital Edition might seem a little unfair. It would be like comparing the Series S to the regular PS5 or the Series X. The PS5 Digital Edition is significantly more powerful and fully capable of embracing everything the next-gen console generation is about. The Series S is still the better pick for anyone on a strict budget or anyone who doesn't have a 4K TV. And the $100 difference between the Series S and the PS5 Digital Edition isn't at all negligible. But if you're worried about storage and could see yourself expanding it on the Series S, then the playing field becomes more even in terms of the overall price. 500GB of Samsung 970 EVO Plus NVMe SSD goes for $100. Sure, you don't have to get the Samsung 970 EVO Plus, there are more affordable NVMe SSDs out there. But this should give you an idea of how much upgrading the storage would cost you. It's not a small penny. This is why we said the Series S console is comparable in price to the PS5 Digital Edition once you account for the extra storage. To be fair, the PS5 doesn't come with a full terabyte of storage space either, but the 825GB it does have leave you with significantly more space to play around with. 
that's 60% more storage to be exact. And as a nice little perk, you get 60% more RAM and almost twice as much graphics processing power to boot. So if you think 500GB of storage isn't enough to accommodate your next-gen gaming needs, then the PS5 Digital Edition is the better pick. Otherwise, nothing can top the 300 price point of the Series S. To summarize, the Xbox Series S is a budget-friendly version of the Xbox Series X that looks to render games in 1440p instead of 4K. In terms of hardware, it's substantially less powerful than the Series X, but if we can trust Microsoft's words, this won't be an issue because of the lower resolution that the console will target. However, even if everything ends up exactly as Microsoft promises, the Series S owners will still only have half a terabyte of storage space to play around with. Gamers who like to focus on one or two games at a time should find this perfectly manageable, but others will likely feel cramped by the storage limitations. The option to expand the storage is there, but given how expensive NVMe SSDs are at the moment, it would be better off to save yourself the trouble and either get the Xbox Series X or the PS5 Digital Edition from the get-go. In any case, we hope you found this video helpful. Let us know if you have by liking it, sharing it with friends, and leaving a comment. And if you'd like to see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe to our channel and enable notifications so that you never miss a video. Also, we've already got plenty of next-gen console-related videos on this channel that you should check out before making your purchase. The links are all in the description. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.